You're listening to a Mint podcast brought to you by HD Smartcast. Hi, I'm Satya Zontanam from Mint's personal finance team. I hope you are enjoying our podcast on personal finance topics. In this episode, let's learn about Sharia compliant funds. We've heard about large cap funds, mid cap, small cap, balanced advantage funds and so on. But what are these Sharia compliant funds? Islamic community laid down some guidelines for Muslims to invest in a manner consistent with their religious beliefs. The idea is to promote ethical and socially responsible investing, avoiding investments in sectors and businesses that are involved in activities such as gambling, alcohol, pork, etc. Now, Sharia compliant funds are investment vehicles that adhere to these principles of Islamic finance. To tell us more about these funds, we have Ankush Tatar, Associate Vice President of the PMS Division at Philip Capital India. Let's invite him. Welcome to Why Not Mint Money, a personal finance podcast where we help you understand basic money concepts and share strategies for you to build your wealth. So let's get started with your money journey. Hi Ankush, welcome to Why Not Mint Money. It's good to have you on the show. Hi Satya, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. In this podcast, uh, we'll talk about the Sharia compliant funds and uh, who can invest in them. Sharia compliant means certain sectors which have to be compliant as per the Sharia laws, right? So Sharia compliant sectors are those uh, which are not involved in the business of alcohol, tobacco, uh, gold and silver trading, uh, banking and financials, uh, or any specifically non-vegetarian related businesses, specific kind of illegal media, right? These kind of industries are completely banned from the Sharia list of investing, right? So these are the sectors which are non-Sharia compliant. No, let's pause a bit, uh, Ankush. Why do these yeah. companies such as alcohol or the banking and financial or the gold and trading companies, why are these companies not covered under Sharia law? What, so, um, what is it about with these companies? Yeah, so as per the Sharia laws, which are prescribed by the Sharia community, right? These do not fit the uh, the community guidelines, right? So, uh, hence these are excluded from the list. Sharia compliant uh, companies. Oh, why do you think so? Uh, could you give us some sense on why a banking and financial company will be considered not part of the Sharia law? Yeah, so specifically banking and financial would be excluded because. Uh, interest income is uh, is considered as against the guidelines of Sharia laws, right? Since these banking and financial companies are generating interest income, uh, these would be excluded from. So that's an example. And other industries such as alcohol, tobacco, gambling, these are all considered sin industries. So hence, these industries will also be included from the list. Okay, okay. So who can invest in these funds? Yeah, so uh, that's actually an interesting question. Although these uh, funds have been curated with the specific view of creating Sharia compliant funds, right, for investors, right, these funds are actually available for every single individual to invest into, right. So for those investors who are actually looking for Sharia compliant investments, of course, this would fit their criteria. But those who are also not looking for Sharia compliant uh, criteria, these, these could also be looked at as a fund, right? So these are available through your mutual funds and PMS. So essentially, these would be available to every single investor. So or who show greater interest in investing in these funds? Uh, more interest is seen in uh, basically the uh, Islamic community, right? There are certain guidelines which have to be followed, right? As per the Sharia law. So they are showing a lot of interest in terms of investing into these funds. Um, also, a very small section of the Jain community also have uh, shown interest in these funds because uh, specific sin industries are avoided like alcohol, tobacco, gambling, which could be going against their uh, views. Right? So, these are the two uh, communities which are showing a lot of interest. Right? Aside from that, as I mentioned, although these two other dominant uh, two segments showing interest, this these funds are available to all kinds of investors.
sure and uh, you know all mutual funds and pmss have a sharia fund in india no not all mutual funds and pmss there would be very selectively uh, selective pms houses and selective mutual funds would be having these kind of sharia funds it's not present with all the asset management companies understand understand and uh, so how is how is it globally how popular are these funds globally yeah so typically somewhere around uh, around in the middle east right uh, sharia compliant products would be very popular there would be a relatively a uh, large size market there's actually a couple of years ago there was an index also launched specifically in saudi arabia the tadawul index which kind of uh, tracks the sharia compliant uh, stocks in the universe uh, in the middle east market of course there would be certain fixed income and real estate uh, asset classes also available through uh, the sharia compliant stocks so fairly popular in the middle east region right so yeah okay who decides a particular stock or an asset or a sector is sharia compliant or not yes so there are actually reputed organizations with a history of uh, experts in uh, sharia laws they are sharia scholars right so these uh, sharia advisory uh, companies these would be giving a specific list screened out of the entire uh, investment universe of the stock market and they actually would decide which stocks are sharia compliant or not okay yeah So most asset management companies utilize their services. Yes. Yeah, so typically, the asset management companies who are running these kind of products, as I mentioned before, the selective mutual funds and PMSs who are running these products would be availing their services, right? Who are basically they they provide the investment universe of which stocks are Sharia compliant or not, right? and asset management companies of accordingly would curate portfolios as per the product that they are managing as as per their portfolio management style okay so uh, is it mandatory by law to for, to take their advice by all sharia funds or is it uh, at the discretion of the fund house that they are taking this decision to take, seek the services of the sharia scholars yes so uh, it's at the discretion of the fund right it's uh, basically it increases credibility also because we are taking the advice of the experts who have been providing these kind of services and who know exactly what stocks would be uh, filling certain uh, sectors and they would be kind of uh, in a much better place to provide this kind of advice in terms of all the industries which i mentioned before right uh so hence most of the fund houses and this increases the credibility of the funders that you know you're getting uh, expert advice you know you're getting credibility from these uh, services to uh, ensure that you are actually investing within these sharia compliant stocks okay in addition to the business or the sector that the company is in could you also talk about some financial key parameters Yes, so there are some interesting financial parameters also, which the Sharia scholars they do their own screening and they provide their services, right? So one is the total debt to total assets of the company should be less than equal to twenty five percent, right? So essentially, what this means is uh, company low on leverage, right? Low on debt, ideally, right? Now total interest income to total income of the company. should be less than equal to 3% it right? not more than 3% of the total income then your receivables and cash balances to the total assets of the company should be less than uh, 90% right so as i mentioned these are financial screening parameters right so interestingly enough even if a stock is in a sharia compliant sector and if it does not meet these financial screening parameters it is considered uh, non sharia compliant so there are two layers first there has to be the it has to be a sharia compliant stock as per the industry after that it has to go through these basic financial parameters 
After it goes through these layers, then only our stock is deemed Sharia compliant or not. Okay, why can't AMC's asset management companies do this research by themselves instead of uh, taking uh, services from? Because these are these are something uh, AMC's will also have access to and the resources to do such research, right? Yeah, so there are certain sectors because end of the day we are abiding by the Sharia laws, right? When we are investing, so we want to take the advice of the scholars who have been actually who are experts in the laws, who actually know what specific sectors would not be included. So these are the sectors that could be included, right? Uh, that are excluded, for example, alcohol, tobacco, gambling, right? What stocks within all of these sectors, right, do not actually fit in? it builds much better credibility from the actual scholars and experts in the law right who have been providing this kind of service okay okay so will this funds be also uh, audited periodically if it is avoid, uh, abiding by the law or not so we are all the funds which are uh, being mentioned basically we are taking the services of the sharia scholars to, to go ahead and uh, invest into the sharia compliant stocks uh, audit will be done as an annual practice as every company has their portfolios audited right it would be a standard process it would not be specifically abiding by uh, the law as such to audit the sharia compliance that basically it's up on the companies that they have to adhere to the sharia compliant list that is sent by the scholars okay yeah so um, let's talk about the performance of these funds in the past are there any you know specific benchmarks that these funds are compared to right uh, so there are actually two benchmarks which are deemed sharia compliant right uh, these are the nifty sharia nifty 50 sharia index and the nifty 500 sharia index right so typically these uh, funds the underlying companies in the funds would exclude uh, companies from uh, your banking financial any kind of uh, sin stocks mentioned above and any stocks which do not meet the a uh, financial screening parameters of the as per the sharia laws right so these are the two primary indexes that are uh, available right and interestingly enough these indexes have been around for more than 10 years right interestingly enough on a point to point basis as per the nse data for 26 may 2023 the nifty sharia 500 had, has actually outperformed the nifty 500 and the nifty 50 on point to point returns over a 10 year period right sure sure and how is the uh, demand for these funds in india uh, ankush how is it growing yes as of now of course the the market size is relatively small uh, because one awareness also needs to be created to this fund is specifically uh, in demand from the communities that i mentioned before right uh, so demand is slowly shaping up uh, what i believe is that demand for this product is actually should be more uh, broad based across multiple communities basically every single investor right so as in when more and more of awareness uh, campaigns or more kind of articles such as one written right now on live mint this creates more and more awareness and basically increase the demand right so it would be a slow process but uh, the demand is slowly but surely increasing okay how are sharia funds different from esg funds yeah so esg funds would follow their own specific uh, guidelines right and uh, sharia funds would be following strictly the laws laid out by the by the sharia law so of course esg would esg fund would also look at the esg rating of a company based on multiple esg parameters uh, sharia funds would mainly screen uh, stocks based on the multiple parameters provided by the sharia scores um just wondering so, i mean if a company is rated very low on the environmental parameter then i'm sure it would also be uh, ranking in the 
below as per the sharia laws don't you think so yes you could say that uh, since sharia uh, funds are investing or uh, avoiding investments into these kind of certain industries there could be some kind of similarities with esg funds okay okay while a, a esg fund may not exclude banking and financial uh, these sharia funds will strictly exclude the banking and financial strictly banking and financial is a strict no in the as per the sharia law okay okay fine uh, anything else uh, any final comments on this uh, ankush uh, nothing satya uh, what i believe is that these uh, more awareness needs to be created for these funds specifically maybe for investors who would be staying away from the markets right for their own views and uh, as we can see from the nifty sharia 500 10 year data we can see that uh, these indexes have also outperformed during certain uh, time periods so they could fit the bill for a tactical play also and hopefully as more and more awareness is created more investors can participate in the india growth story also through these funds okay okay this discussion is so just a standard disclaimer again this discussion is only for general information on a way of investing uh, certain sectors and it's no way an indication of an advice or recommendation nothing mentioned in this podcast should be viewed as advice uh, please contact your financial advisor for the same yeah Thanks Ankush thank you so much That's all for now in this episode listeners if you have any queries or suggestions you can reach out to me on twitter my handle is at satya sontanam s a t y a s o n t a n a m or you can also write to us at mintmoney@livemint.com bye bye Stay updated on this podcast. Follow us at HD Smartcast on all the major social media platforms. To listen to more such podcasts, log on to www.hdsmartcast.com. Hold up. 